All right, you guys. So I haven't been doing the Money Monday the last two Mondays, mostly because we've been just slammed busy just trying to get this job done. And then yesterday I was actually in Montana with uh, Liza and Balin and we were just hanging out. But guys, we're down here, we're back in Colorado and I'm hanging out with Jed and Daniel right now. Now, guys, it's 100 degrees outside, it's hot, it's not the funnest thing in the world to be out here. But these guys are out here practicing a branch. They've been out here every day for the past three or four days out here practicing. Now, it's not going to be the funnest thing in the world, but I'm going to talk to these guys about their thoughts on what it takes to be a welder, all right? What it's going to take for them to pass a test, what it's going to take for them to uh, achieve what they're trying to achieve in this. So I hope you guys enjoy. Hope you guys learn something off of this. This is what it takes to do this, all right? So everybody have a great rest of your day. Hope you enjoy, and we'll talk to these guys here in just a day. Okay, so I got the boys sitting here right now, and they just got done with how many branches is this for you guys? This will be my second and Daniel's first one. Oh, what are your guys' thoughts? Like, what does it take to do this? I'm a helper, everybody knows that. Jed started as a helper, too. Oh, yeah, and then Jed did structural, and now he's gonna move up to that. But as a helper, I make very little money compared to these guys, and it takes a lot to put this together. So this is Daniel's full rig truck and he bought this whole thing. Like that was my old machine, he bought that. I didn't give him that, he bought that. That was my old welding bed, he bought that. That is his truck, that's a 2013? 2011. 2011 Dodge Dooley uh, 3500 Cummins. Mm -hmm. Killer deal on it, but he had to take the loan out and buy that. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts, Dan, on that? It was a good purchase been a good truck it's still a good truck um but then all the tools that i've had to buy and purchase i've i've skipped out on a lot of fun dinners yep and it's it's worth it though it is because in the end you'll be able to buy dinners for everybody yeah oh yeah no doubt in one day's check yeah. jed your thoughts uh well since i've welded for a year i've done structural for a year year and a half ish the one thing that i think is important to remember is maintain your stuff mm. um right now i just barely switched out my uh stinger which i've had for a long time should have switched it out a while ago <laughs> but we just switched it out and then we had to cut some of the lead down because we had quite a few cracks in it and so just make sure you maintain your oil changes all of your leads your tools your tools are what makes you money it is and that in the truck and your skills okay so, so Jed, as soon as he became a welder, he got this truck. What did you do? What do you mean? <laughs> like oh, the lift? Immediately <laughs> paid it off. Yeah. Paid yeah. Two months, three months. So I actually was given a pretty good opportunity. A good friend of ours, David Dubet. Um, this was his old truck, and I had talked to him a little bit about buying it, uh, but I could never get the banks to finance me because I already had a truck loan and an RV loan. And they weren't wanting to put a second one on there for at least as much as he wanted. He wanted twenty nine thousand. That's what I paid. And so David was nice enough. He said, "Just, just make payments to me, and we'll get it. We'll work it out that way." And so what I did is I put ten thousand dollars down, which is what I had in my savings account, and then I saved every dime and had it paid off in three months. Which so is amazing. We knocked it out quick because I didn't. The one thing that would suck is to leave your friend in a bad situation. I didn't want to leave David like owing money and I don't have a job and I can't afford to pay for it. So just get that one out of the way. And you should look at it the same way with a bank. You should. Just get rid of the loan and be done with it. Yeah. So right now I owe money on this truck and me and Liza, Liza's actually right here. Uh, we are working on paying that off. It is getting paid off because no matter what, as long as that is paid off, I can make money somewhere. Mm -hmm. So, Daniel, what are your goals? Oh yeah. Same? Uh, this will be paid off by the end of the year. Yeah, so Daniel, everything's paid off. 
Everything is paid off on Daniel's truck except the truck. So that works out good. A lot of late nights. Yep, practicing. What's um, it take? I drove, I'd save on gas because I drove my truck to the job site, let it sit for three or four weeks, and I drive a little Nissan that gets like 38 miles to the gallon. And back and forth, and I stay till seven or eight at night after work. Um, that's on five o'clock days, and then drive home from there and immediately go to bed. Sometimes I'll take a shower because I'm so tired. <laughs> <laughs> uh, those are the nights. I've heard a lot of people spend the night in Walmart parking lots in their truck on the job site. Mm. I don't think that's allowed, but don't get caught. Just don't get caught. Just don't get caught. Anyways, uh, so yeah. How many late nights did you spend? Jed did it in winter. So I don't know what it is. I am not a fan of being out here in the heat. I am today. We're out here getting our practicing in done today. Um, but I would rather sit in the cold at night than in the heat. Yes. Yes, and so I spent... Jed's um, a ginger. I'm a ginger. Yeah, the sun Jet cooks. Like me. <laughs> and so I spent from middle of November through December and I think part of January. No, I didn't even get the job till February. So it was till February. I just spent every night, a couple hours after work. It was it was nice because everything was already rolled out. You didn't have to roll a bunch of stuff out. That's the one thing, like if I was to come back to the camper and having to roll out is just motivation. You just have to get that motivation. And so having everything already rolled out was nice. And then I just spent a couple hours there listening to my tunes. Every night. Mm -hmm. That's the same thing Daniel's doing right now. Yep. So for everybody that wants to be a welder, what is your biggest advice? Don't Jed. Jed? You're coming next. Maybe go to Daniel first and I'll think Okay, go it. Dan. Don't take days off. If you take one to two to three to four days off and you go and don't weld you're gonna lose it yeah and especially just beginning when you begin it is the hardest thing to pick up yeah. but once you start if you got a couple months under your belt and you want to go take a few days off to go see the family then that's okay but that was a hard part for me is because these guys will travel back home to idaho and i want to go with them and so if i take those days off then i lose it but right now I'm I'm good enough that I I withheld the techniques. Yeah. But kept <laughs> kept them. Kept, kept them. <laughs> good. Yeah, what, I guess what's your biggest? Mine tip. is just don't make excuses. Same thing. I mean, it's just being consistent and you're going to come up with a hundred different excuses on why you shouldn't practice tonight. Just ignore them. You have to. You have to. Nobody can give you this. My excuse, I, so we are in between jobs right now. We've got three or four days. And I told Daniel, we're going camping. And then I told myself, I can't afford to go camping. Yep. Like I wanted to go up and go fishing up in the mountains. Colorado's known for their camping and fishing. And I told myself, nope, we gotta be here to practice. So, yep. just postpone those things. Yep. You've always got time later. Yep. It sucks. Yeah, it does. But it's not the funnest thing in the <laughs> world, yeah. but it's funner when you have big checks rolling in. It is. And it's easier to get out here when you have buddies. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and the confidence into this, once you pass branch tests and you've passed a few of your pipe tests, the confidence end of it of knowing you can pass one of these is so big. Mm. So, got to get through your first couple and then you're good to go. Yeah. And you'll still bust them oh, yeah. every now and then. Now, my thoughts on busting a test, and you guys can tell me your thoughts. Okay. Sometimes it's skill. Sometimes you're not meant to make that test because the skill level isn't there. The way I look at a test is if you were supposed to make it, Henley Fire would have helped you make it. Mm -hmm. Okay? For some reason, you're not supposed to be on that job. That is the way I look at a test. And it's always motivated me to realize that there's another one, there's one down the road, because I've busted my fair share of tests. Yeah. And there's always another one and maybe that wasn't the one you're supposed to be on. Yeah. So Jacob, that's a good explanation for Jake. Jake's got skills and so he does break tests every now and then, which we all do. Yeah. Um, but just like Redfern grows, you gotta meet God halfway. You gotta make sure you've got your, you're out here practicing every night 
and you are putting in the effort. You're meeting him halfway, and he'll help you with the rest. That is so true. Mm -hmm. I love Redfern. I do too, man. Yeah, I do job. too. You got to work and put in the effort because this is not given to you. Yep. Ever. This welding thing is not something that is given to you at all. No. You have to learn it. Nobody came out here knowing how to do this. Mm -hmm. Everybody sat out here and learned how to do this. And it is not something you're going to just pick up. No. You do have to put in the time. So for everybody that's over there struggling and feeling like they can't get this figured out, it takes time, it takes effort, it takes somebody maybe coming out and helping you learn. Mm -hmm. So that was yeah. a good, that was good. Oh, yeah. Hope everybody kind of picked up on something, all right? There's... All, there's always going to be a obstacle to cross, okay? There's all, and sometimes they're bigger than others, all right? In the welding industry, you do not just come out here and in a couple weeks learn how to weld. It's not something that is that way, or else everybody would be doing it. These guys, Jed was a helper for a couple years. Daniel's been a helper for one year now. I was a helper for a couple years. Just because you went out and you ground on some pipe and you, you know, maybe you ran a couple beads or whatever does not make you a welder. The late nights being out here, the, the nights of learning how to weld, the frustration end of it, that is what makes you a welder. I want you to know everybody that is on a pipeline, that is in a refinery, that is welding on anything pressurized or uh, plate fabrication or whatever, anything that needs a skilled welder it took nights it took uh long hours of practice and they did not just come out here and learn it so everybody that is down on your luck that is down on how you know this is so hard i can't figure this out it was hard for all of us so stop being a baby get up get out there go make it happen just like jed said quit making excuses because we can all make excuses no matter what so everybody have a great rest of your night be blessed and we'll talk to you later see you